never happened before. You, you've never seen a situation in which folks are denouncing the person who's nominated as their party leader. And it's because Donald Trump is uniquely unqualified to be president. He is temperamentally unfit to be commander in chief. Listen, if you want to keep our military the greatest fighting force that the world has ever known, if you want America to stay strong and respected, then we can't have a commander in chief who suggests that it's okay to torture people, that suggests that we should ban entire religions from our country. We can't afford a commander in chief who insults POWs or attacks. No, wait, 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 wait. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hey, hold up, hold up. Hold up, we're talking. Hey, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Hey, listen, 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 listen. Listen up. Hey, I told you to be focused, and you're not focused right now. Listen to what I'm saying. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Everybody sit down and be quiet for a second. Everybody sit down and be quiet for a second. Now listen up. I'm serious. Listen up. You've got an older gentleman who is supporting his candidate. He, he's not doing nothing. You don't have to worry about him. You should. This is what I mean about folks not being focused. First of all, first of all, we let, for, hold up. Hold up. First of all, we live in a country that respects free speech. So, second of all, it looks like maybe he might have served in our military and we got to respect that. Third of all, he was elderly and we got to respect our elders. And fourth of all, don't boo. Oh! Don't boo. Oh! Come on! Now, I want you to pay attention. Because if we don't, if we lose focus, we could have problems. This is part of what's happened here during this election season. We just get stirred up for all kinds of reasons that are unnecessary. All... Just relax. Now, I want to remind you what I was saying. We can't afford a commander-in-chief who insults POWs, who attacks a Gold Star mother, who actually talks down to our troops, says he knows more than our generals. Even a Republican senator said we can't afford to give somebody like that the nuclear code, somebody so erratic. I want you to think about that. When, when, when I was sworn in as president. The next day, I'm sitting down, actually not the next day, that just right afterwards, I had to sit down with somebody who explained this whole nuclear thing. It'll sober you up. It's serious business. We can't have somebody like that handling our nuclear coats. We can't have somebody who gets upset because Saturday Night Live does a skit about him and starts tweeting at 3 o'clock in the morning, that's not the temperament that you want for somebody who's got the nuclear coats. So 
If you believe that America is stronger when everybody does their part, yes. if you believe that America is stronger when everyone pays their fair share, yes. then we can't elect the first candidate in decades who re refuses to release any tax returns, admits he has not paid federal income tax in years, somebody who stiffs small business people who do work for him, or workers who've done work for him and he owes them, but he says, I won't pay you because, you know what, I got more lawyers than you. The notion that somebody like that is going to be the champion of working people, somebody who exploits working people, somebody who probably doesn't know any working people except the person who cleans up and the person who mows the fairway at his golf course, how can that person be a champion for working people? If you cherish our Constitution, we can't elect a president who threatens to shut down the press when they say something he doesn't like, who threatens to throw his opponents in jail, who discriminates against people of different faiths. Our Constitution does not allow that. There are places around the world where that's acceptable, but that's not the United States of America. If you believe we're stronger together, then we can't elect a president who vilifies minorities, mocks Americans with disabilities, calls immigrants criminals and rapists. We can't elect a president who brags that being famous allows him to get away with something that if you read the description qualifies as sexual assault, who calls women pigs and dogs and slobs and grades them on a scale of 1 to 10, that's not America. It, this, this is not a Democrat or a Republican, that's not America. Michelle and I, we've got two magnificent daughters. And they are primarily magnificent because Michelle is magnificent. And, and they're smart and they're cute, just like their mama. But, but the thing I, I, I'm so proud of them is that they're kind and they're generous. And we've taught them to respect everybody. That nobody's higher than you, but nobody's lower than you. And you don't lift yourself up by putting somebody else down. Those values that we've taught our children, that you're teaching your children, your grandchildren, we can't have a president who every day seems to violate those basic values. And, and, and the problem is, is that he's done it so much that, that it's become almost normal. It's like uh, suddenly reality TV has entered into the race for the presidency. It's not even Survivor or The Bachelorette. I mean, it's like some love and hip hop stuff. I mean, it's just, it's just some, some stuff that uh, up until this election, we would have said is completely disqualifying. And yet, somehow, Everybody's gotten accustomed to it, acting like it's normal. And we hear people justifying it and making excuses about it and saying, well, you know, he didn't really mean it. Or it's locker room talk. Or, well, maybe he did mean it, but as long as he supports tax cuts for the rich or as long as he supports doing the things we want to do, then it's okay. Come on, man. That we, 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 can't, we can't be thinking somehow that just because he agrees with you on some policy issue or just because you're frustrated with government that it's okay to display the kind of behavior he displays. Because I want to tell you something about this office that I've been in for eight years. Who you are, what you are, 
does not change once you become president. It will, it will magnify who you are. You have more power, so as a consequence, folks will enable you to be more who you are. It will shine a spotlight on who you are. But if you disrespected women before you were in office, then you will disrespect women once you take office. If you accept, if you accept the support of Klan sympathizers, if you don't denounce them right away because you're, you're kind of not sure, well, that's what you're going to do when you're in office. If you disrespect the Constitution when you're running for president, then not only will you dis disrespect it once you become president, but you actually might be able to violate the Constitution once you're president. And, and, and the reason I say all this is because, yes, I am a proud Democrat. But we're not Democrats or Republicans first. We're children of God first. We are Americans first. We are human beings first. I've got Republican friends who don't think or act the way Donald Trump is acting. And as a consequence, they're not voting for him, even if they disagree with Democratic policies. This is somebody different, uniquely unqualified to do the job. But the good news is, North Carolina, all of you are uniquely qualified to make sure he doesn't get the job. You just have to vote. You just have to vote. And the good news is you don't have to just vote against somebody, you can vote for somebody. Because there's somebody who's smart and who's steady and who's tested. Somebody who I believe is as qualified as any person ever to run for this office. She is my friend. I trust her. She will be an outstanding president. And her name is Hillary Clinton. And I need you to vote for her.